Hi guys, it's opening day of the Ontario spring turkey season and I've got my, my sidekick, my grandson Lucas, with me today. He's 13, he's under the, the hunter apprenticeship program here in the southern Ontario. He can actually uh, shoot his first turkey this year on, my ta on one of my tags and I'm happy for that. Uh, I've been waiting for this day for a long time. So it's kind of a rainy day for opening day but uh, we've got an Alton safe den that we're going to go and set in, it's set up in a fence line and uh, I've taken many turkeys before there. We're gonna take Lucas in there and see if we can't get him a turkey. So come with us and uh, we'll see how things go. When we got settled in, a lone hen fed in our direction. She didn't seem discouraged by the rain and it was a great icebreaker for Lucas. Well, it's May 2nd and uh, I've got my grandson Lucas with me again today. Um, we've been struggling a little bit to get one with Luke, with Lucas here. Um, I want him to take a, a, a careful shot and not, you know, not have to rush the shot or anything like that. He's a good shot, but I don't want him, I don't want him to wound a bird for his first, uh, you know, his first experience. So we won't do that. We'll take a nice careful shot. This bird should come out. Uh, I've been scouting a bird over here. The backstory on it is it's the same one that my wife Ingrid shot over his head last year, I think. I mean, you can never know for sure, but uh, he's on the same pattern in the same place. And uh, they were calling for quite high winds, but it doesn't seem like we're getting real high winds yet. So if everything goes well, we'll slide in there, get, get set up and uh, call that bird in and be able to show them to you. This nice Tom approached cautiously from the wrong direction. He ended up skyline, so we opted not to take the shot. morning uh, just to recap opening day was Wednesday and uh, I took my grandson Lucas out for his first hunt uh, that was that was really neat uh, now we didn't have a lot of action as you saw we had a hen come in we were in a blind had our blacks on and everything like that but we didn't hear any gobbling or anything like that and uh, you know it was kind of a boring day for him the next day uh, yesterday we uh, went to a different spot and we were kind of set up on the ground uh, it's it's kind of tough with the young kid he's only 13 and you're trying to get him sitting there so today I'm on my own he's gone back to school so uh, grandpa gets to go out and, and try and get one uh, I'm in a spot where um, there's a lot of gobbling has been stick with me and I'll and I'll see what I can do closed captioning of today's episode is brought to you by Canuck.
two of them gobbled. This is a this is an old faithful spot. I'm being quiet because as you seen that other Tom, he had no idea what was going on here. And I want to come back in in a couple of days or a day or two, or whatever, and bring my uh, grandson or my wife in to shoot one. <clears throat> that guy's liable to call right back in. It starts off. There are two of them gobbling over there. A hen shows up in the field here. I couldn't show it to you because she was behind the bush. And then, all of a sudden, for some stupid reason, she decides she's going to fly away, fly over me. She flew right over my head. I could have reached up and almost grabbed her by the leg. Oh. Scared the crap out of me. So then, anyway, she goes on her merry way. Those two toms played around, played around, played around for a while over there. They were at about 100 yards on the other side of the brush line. And then all of a sudden they decided, I called to him, I called to him, I called to him. And then they were going away, coming back, going away, coming back. And a lot of times that's a classic uh, sign where they're trying to get that hen to come to them. So I started tapering off my calls, slowing them down a little bit, and then stopped. He's still here, he doesn't know what's going on. He's hollering to his buddy, he said, this chick's playing, let's go. But anyway, uh, uh, as you saw, they came in really nice. I was waiting for them to separate a little bit. I would give you a little more of a show. Um, but I just, they were starting to look at the decoy funny. I thought I better take them while I had the chance. And uh, as soon as they were separated enough, I let the one have it. Well, there he is. Man, you saw how that went down. That was pretty good. Uh, he just, uh, let me get behind him here. Sometimes the best thing you can do is just play hard to get and just let him come, you know. Uh, so I did, and uh, I got antsy, so I let him have it. But a <laughs> uh, couple of nice birds. This one's got some real nice hook spurs. Some nice hooks on him inch inch and a quarter hooks they're real nice uh, you can see that real good but man what a morning uh the only regret that i have is that i've been trying to get my grandson lucas a bird here for a while now and uh, a couple of days anyway and he's brand new 13 years old i would have loved to have had him come in here and see that i'm going to uh, take this bird back and <clears throat> show him what uh, what getting up in the morning and going out gets you uh, he couldn't uh, he couldn't come out this morning he'll be happy to see this and it might uh, inspire him to get you know to get busy and get at it again so anyway uh, one down one more to go hopefully Lucas can shoot the next one this portion of today's episode is brought to you by Bergara our barrels make the difference <laughs> Very next morning, Lucas and I were back at it.
man, my man Lucas, I'm so proud of you, buddy. You did an awesome job. You smoked that thing. Thank you. You smoked it, you think? <laughs> Look at him, he's just flat. I've been waiting for this day for a long, long time. It feels good. Mm. Man, oh man. When Lucas was a tiny little baby, he spent a couple of days in, a, in an incubator. I can remember standing there looking into that incubator. Lucas is my first grandchild. And just thinking, I can't wait to, for the adventures that we're gonna have together. And this is the beginning. His uh, first year uh, hunting, and he just smoked a beautiful gobbler and did it in fine form. I couldn't be more proud of him. He sat, that bird was coming in, strutting and everything, took his time through the brush. There was a hen there for a good while, as you saw, for you know, for a good while, and, and was looking at us and everything. He stayed absolutely frozen still. I'm so happy with the way he did that. He did such a good job, buddy. Ooh, he's bigger than I thought. There he is. My grandson, Lucas, with his first turkey. Beautiful fan. Not, I got, it's gotta be a 10 inch beard, I'm thinking. He's like a 22, 23 pounder. Real nice, mature tom, nice hooks on him. Oh man, I couldn't be happier. He did such a fantastic job. That was not an easy hunt. We had that hen come in, as you saw, and she hung around for quite a while. So we had to sit absolutely still. And uh, Lucas did that. And uh, he watched that tom strut through the brush right up into, <laughs> right up into position, held off because he was kind of uh, behind the decoy a little bit and couldn't get clear of the decoy. I held him off and he had the discipline to hold off really well. And, and when the time came, I said, go ahead and kill him. And he did. What do you think, buddy? Uh, people usually get a Jake for their first turkey, and I that's got right. a Tom. That's so right. That's pretty special. Yeah, that's for sure, buddy. It sure is. This guy, he's a mature Tom. He's been around the block a little bit already, and uh, he managed to sit tight and, and hold off till the shot was just right and everything. Uh, any of you folks at home that have grandkids, uh, you know, you, or kids of your own, you need to get them out and, and, and get them to enjoy this sport and teach them about wildlife conservation through hunting turkeys and uh, some of the other resources that we have out here. It's a fantastic way to bond with your, uh, with your family. And uh, I mean, there's no better family sport in the world. It was safe to say that we had indoctrinated another turkey hunter into the fraternity. And in case you couldn't tell, I was one proud grandpa. This portion of today's episode is brought to you by PSE Archery. What makes this next hunt so special is that my wife Ingrid has persevered through some difficult times as a turkey hunter. On a target, she's just fine, but throw in the adrenaline of a strutter at the end of the barrel and, well, you see the result. We installed a red dot sight on her gun and it made all the difference.
That is one of the most important turkeys I think I've ever been in on the kill for. Ingrid has had some trials and tribulations in the last couple of years. Uh, she has mono vision, and we had a um, we had a series of beads on her on her shotgun and. <laughs> She was having a lot of issues with, uh, she shot over the heads of a couple of turkeys um, because of it. But uh, she didn't shoot over the head of that one. She smoked them butt good. Yep. That is uh, Ingrid's Mother's Day present. <laughs> Couldn't be happier, like I said, you know, I mean, it's like uh, a huge weight lifted off both of our shoulders. Uh, you never, uh, you never give up. You always got to keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. But things uh, things turned around pretty good. We put a red dot on that shotgun, and that made all the difference. Yeah. He's got about three quarter inch spurs, or so I think he's a two year old. He was certainly acting like a dominant tom, so he was coming in there strutting. As you saw, it was beautiful. You know, uh, he had her heartbeat pounding pretty good because. <laughs> He kept strutting just out of range. <laughs> strut, strut, strut. You'd hear him spitting and drumming. And I hope that comes through on the soundtrack for you. Somebody's got to make me breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> that was the deal, I yeah. guess. So, yeah, Mother's Day breakfast now. Yep. And, uh, and we'll get this guy uh, tagged up and, and head out to the truck. Thanks for watching, and be sure to tune in next time for more exciting hunting action on Anthony Dixon's Line of Sight.